You're not even doing it to music. Does that count? Yes, it does count. So this was the first one, this is the first throwback, well it's flashback, this is Friday, and that was the other one. So two things I'm heavily involved in, and that's why I know all the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but really all the stuff is known from experimentation. Anyway guys, welcome, happy Friday. Me's happy because she's got no more homeschool after today for two days. And we're going to do... I've been asked to do square graduation. So I'm going to do actually triangular and I'm going to do square. And probably not the square that you are accustomed to if you have looked at these and worked with these. So something that I've evolved through experimentation. So we're gonna start on this left side. And I know we did the graduate above the other day, but you can never have enough graduation. It's a great technique. But I did alternate versions the other day. So today I'm gonna to do classic graduate above on this left side. So the original OG Vidal Sassoon way, probably done in the 60s, 70s. Nah, 60s for sure. Cool, so, yeah. Me's gonna film, as usual. So ask your questions through Mimi. Mm -hmm. And if she's not in the right spot, just tell her and she'll move to where you can see what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Right, I'm gonna get the pants in first. These are my Friday pants. Yes. <clears throat> All right. Friday pants. Friday pants. I've been working out, been running every day, so things are starting to fit much better. <laughs> that first part of the uh, lockdown was rough. Just eat. All right, so this was what we did yesterday. Um, our uh, triangular disconnected concave and convex layers. Um, so classic graduated bob, what you'll see a lot of people do is section this away. And what they'll do is they'll, they'll pivot up to that point from that spot. And that just leaves a tremendous amount of weight right on that spot. So the classic graduated bob, come over this side of me, you're gonna see it much better, mm -hmm. is to not section anything away and you work from the parting and you work from the occipital ridge down vertical diagonal and then what you do is you move up a little bit and you pivot a little bit more and you keep doing that until you reach your desired geometry that you want to see through to the front so that's what i'm going to do so we're going old school um this is the variation that i did put on the paul mitchell cutting system which you saw behind me in the book. Um, not the easiest way to do a graduated bob, I would say for a beginner, but it's an essential haircut. To me, this is the haircut that really taught me a lot about control because you're doing everything. You're starting vertically and you're pivoting to horizontal and you're working with diagonals and you're building weight and so on and so on. So it taught me a lot. so many hair words like i'm just trying to make sense of you it. are <laughs> yeah it's very interesting like it just sounds super complicated well hopefully i'm not making it complicated for the hairdressers <laughs> the heads <laughs> on the piano so just the heads on the piano let's yeah. talk about graduation in relation to head shape so we can see that the head's curved right so what a lot of people do is from this point down, they just tend to follow the head shape, thinking that that's graduation, but that's not graduation, guys. Even if that's longer right there, 
this has to be shorter than everything. So let's see, I, I could technically make an H right now, right? You see that? But technically graduation, you need to create a V. So it has to physically get longer all the way, not just from that point up. So. <clears throat> also, that's so cool. Someone, someone said that me, you're an equestrian, my, um, my girls love riding. Yes. I, yes. Oh, and I. Me that's awesome. With it, yeah. Yes, I really miss riding. I really miss jumping. I want to go back. So what I'm doing is I'm angling my fingers in. Um, my fingertips point out. My knuckles point in. I don't cut past the second knuckle because then, if you notice the fingers, this actually gets wider right there. So instead of it being pure graduation, you're going to layer the edge, and if you layer the edge, that's when it collapses. So just understanding in its purest form what graduation is and how to create it. Have you ever put a, like a, tried to do a filter on a mannequin, a doll head? Yes, we have done that. That's hilarious. We should do, we should mm -hmm. do a face swap later. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing that. So just tightening this graduation up until I get exactly what I want to see. Can everybody see that? So now I'm gonna see my graduation. So now what I'm gonna do is just take my next section, which is a little bit higher up and it pivots a little bit more. So I move immediately towards horizontal. Still vertical diagonal, but I'm pushing, I'm moving that way. So now number two is going to go into number one. What's funny? They're all like, put your dad's face on the pixie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so bringing two back into number one. Immediately what that's going to do is it's going to make it get longer towards the front, right? I'm pulling away from what I want to keep. How yeah. do you feel about cutting micro bobs on a mannequin head? Too weird? Um, micro bobs. I'm guessing you mean in short bobs, right? Another terminology thing. And it depends because once you start coming up in here and you want a box bob, you're gonna have to scissor over comb that underneath off, which is what I would do. And it just doesn't look right on a mannequin when you do that. So I can do it, but we'll just see all this like ugh, down here. Um. Hmm. Oh, yeah. So a little bit higher up. This is... And pivoting a little bit more. This is a graduated bob, right? It is a classic... Yeah. Classic graduated, graduated bob. bob. Yeah, I'm doing it the classic way. The way it was done back in the day at Sassoon, at Vidal Sassoon. So what I'm doing is I'm starting... This is how I drew the partings, right? Just right. come here. So I've started down here, and then I've pivoted and I'm moving up the parting as I pivot, I'm not gonna stay on one spot. Then it's gonna be like a mushroom. So again, I'm, I'm bringing back into my previous section. So I'm gonna get rid of the first section. I don't need that. I just need number two and I'm gonna bring three into two. Where did you start? What part of the occipital? I started at the middle of it. If I start a little bit lower than that, the weight just tends to drop off and you want it to go this way. You don't want it to do that. But now you know how you can do that. So just looking at that now, I can see my actual shape starting to form. Just have a quick check, the opposite dimension. And as you can see, see that? Nice and clean as I move through to the front. So again, a little bit higher up the party and pivot a little bit more. So I'm creeping towards horizontal as you see. Did you say three into two? 
Yes, I'm working into my previous. So now I'm going to get rid of number one and number two and just use three and four. So I'm going to bring four back into three. And that's the movement that you do in the graduate bob for the nape area. Are we speaking to the manager in this haircut or no, just the supervisor? just the supervisor in this case. I mean, realistically, what I'm doing is just a very classic graduated bob. It's he's, a little bit different to what we did the other day. He's using Mizutani 5.5 pen slim scissors. Now everybody else knows. Exactly. They, they all, they're all, that question for me. Everybody knows your Wait scissors Wait till I size. use a different pair. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe when we come back and do more tutorials, I'll use some other scissors. But right now, I really love using these. Um, I've got many different brands that I use over the years. Generally... And they've got the factory logo too. These do, yeah. Which they, is They were awesome. made, custom made for me. I, you know, we had them for a while. We had a limited run of these scissors. But you can get the pen slim from Mizutani. And that's Mizutani America on uh, Instagram. That's my friend Kiyoshi. What's up, babe? If you start below the occipital, will it get heavier? It just leaves it lower, lumpier down here. Because remember, this is the most protruding part. So if I start in the middle, push it out a little bit more. If I start lower, it pushes it down. And if I start higher, it goes leaner. And the tripod is um, pivot point. Yeah. So you see now I'm, I'm working definitely in more horizontal world. So now it's about elevation. So I'm still bringing my, the hair into the previous. But I'm not over directing back. I'm now elevating, pulling the head down into the previous section. How do you ensure balance on both sides with the classic? That is the hardest part for me. I would go step by step. And how large are your sections? They're about the thickness of one of my fingers at its widest part, but they're pivoting, so they're working from a point. What? My angle done. Hmm. Yeah. I'm asking, do you? Uh, I'm thinking it's do you. What angle do you use to check this pivoting? Because it looks like because they said donuts. Something that's do you. Let's read it. Let me see it. What angle donuts use to check that this pivoting? I'm guessing it's do you. What uh, angle do you? The yes. angle is. I'm just when I did this. Come over here. I'm trying to sit down again. It's not happening. <laughs> so when I did this, that's the angle that I chose. Uh, I'm not one of those guys that says 45 degrees. Right? That to me is very naive as a hair cutting educator. Because how do you know you're at 45? You could be at 48. You could be at 38 degrees. I don't even know degrees. I was absent for that time in really? like third so grade. We're gonna work on that I have one. no idea what degrees so, are. Again, guys, bringing down into the previous... So now what you'll see is we've reached that section that works all the way through. So if you notice, that's going with the jawline. So I'm actually now working on the bob part of the haircut. I've done the graduation. So now this will be the guide for everything else in the haircut. Or on this side anyway. So if you are familiar with my work from Paul Mitchell, this was the version that I did on the cutting system. The classic one. So now you see it moving through the front. A, a, a graduated bob isn't a protected line all the way through that's graduated. It's a graduation with a bob sat on top. So you will always get this gap in this hole. <laughs> Someone that? says, I try not to use a donut when cutting the powder gets everywhere. <laughs> that's funny. And then um, someone said, how late am I? So I guess, I'm guess i guessing that's a recap. Oh yeah, a recap. We're uh, working a classic graduated bob on this left side. And when I mean classic, I mean the original way from Vidal Sassoon, which as we know, basically wrote the book on how to cut hair. And I was very fortunate to have a part in writing the ABC. Once upon a time when I worked at Vidal Sassoon, I worked uh, with a great bunch of educators that were, you know, still are 
the best that there is. And uh, I was fortunate to be around at that time. And we created this thing called the Family of Technique, which was basically the first part of the Vedasa Soon ABC that you, if you've ever looked at that book. So again, I'm pulling it down onto that section where I found my geometry through to the front. So I have a stationary guideline now. So now I'm building a bob. I'm building a heavy graduation. I'm pulling away from what I want to keep. So let's have a little cross check of that. Chuck it vertical and I'm checking it the opposite way. And I can see that build up of white nice and clean. I prefer the coke. guys here. I prefer the coconut crunch type. Still messy though. Now everyone's talking about donuts now. Oh, Is hi, Erica. Funny? Hi, Erica. You should be able to cut hair by next week. Oh, yeah. Lord. I actually want to. So I'm coming through just checking all of this. Come over here, me. Mm -hmm. So these guys can see what I'm doing. So I'm checking vertical diagonal back now. So you remember where I did the bob with graduation from the front the other day? So you can see how it can be done. I could have worked this way, the opposite way. I already took it out. Oh. Trash. <laughs> CC, are you watching? You know. So you because my mom's it. running in her lovely outfit right now. So checking that all the way through the opposite dimension, the opposite way, and I can see a nice build up. So I'm happy with that, I'm gonna continue. I can see the bob working all the way through to the front. So one of the trickiest things in this haircut is knowing how to get the length to where you want it in the front. And this is not one of the easiest haircuts in the world. Not everybody has had the specific training or has, you know, worked on this particular look that much. So it can be very tricky to end up with the right length in the front that your clients requested. So I'm going to show you something different on the other side. What's up, me? Um, what's the first few haircuts you do on a fresh mannequin head? So you're trying to uh, maximize the use of a mannequin. I'm pretty good at that. So what you want to do is you want to start with longer, keep the length of the mannequin and just layer it and keep the, la the layers on the longer side, even longer than you would think long layers. And uh, I would do a round layer, a concave layer, and I would do a, a triangular concave layer. Then you can start to bring it up into the long kind of bob length, and then you could layer that bob. You could then do the shag, but if you do the shag, then you take all the front out and you wouldn't be able to do something like this. So if you've got two mannequins, you can get pretty much every haircut you'd ever want done with it. And then you can get it down to short hair or you could barber it if you wish to. What's up, mate? Hmm. If the hair is fine, would you use lower elevation around the jaw? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, that goes without saying, you know, fine hair. You want it to look as thick as possible, so you want it to be on the lower end of the graduation. What reference point do you use to get the same elevation throughout since you don't use degrees? It's all about what your guide looks like. And if you, I mean, if you think you're using degrees, you're not using degrees, guys. You're just using elevation. Um, no one knows where 45 is, technically. You know where zero is and you know where 90 is. Right, zero is natural fall and 90 is straight out from the head. So anywhere in between is kind of up for debate. All you need to know is the lower you pull it, the heavier it gets up there. It's just like when you overdirect everything to the middle or you ever overdirect everything back or you overdirect to the previous. It's the same thing, it's just elevation. It depends on how heavy you want to be. But I know when I'm at the right elevation, when my guide is solid. So continuing that all the way through. Come over on this side, babe. Yeah, I'll do that. Does that work? Mm-hmm. That view, that's the one. 
So I'm bringing it down to that elevation around the occipital, following it all the way through down. So the further I go up the head, the more hair I'm actually holding. So if you feel that that is like too much, even though you're only going to cut from there to there, split that. I know a lot of people do that. For me, it's, it's habit. I used to be a lot um, slower, methodical. Um, now I'm much looser, I would say, but I have full control. And I think that's just down to how many years I've been doing this. Plus, whoever you've been trained by and whoever you watch and you're inspired by, you're gonna kind of take on their kind of traits of how they cut hair. And when I was at Sassoon, it was Tim Hartleyland. And all I ever did was watch Tim cut hair. Tim and Stacy Broughton were really strong cutters for me as when I was uh, working there. We have greetings from Italy. Hey Italy, chat. Mm -hmm. um, and then, do you suggest to buy the ABC Cutting book from Sassoon? Um, yeah, why not? Good book. So when you, when you look at that first part of the book and you see all the kind of the theory behind hair cutting, that's what stuff that we wrote in Santa Monica. Yeah. What's that, Erin? Mm -hmm. Who am I nervous to cut hair in front of? Um, well, you know me, dude, so I'm pretty much nervous to cut hair anyway. I'm pretty introverted in reality, but I do an extrovert thing, so I'm not really that nervous cutting in front of somebody, maybe. I've cut hair in front of everybody that was my mentor before, so I've been put on that spot. You know, I've cut hair next to a lot of these people. So again, everything's coming down onto that first section down here. The student becomes the teacher. Yeah, I mean, eventually that's what happened, you know. One of my biggest critics was my dad. My dad's a hairdresser. And, uh, you know, I would be doing my training at Sassoon and then on weekends I'd do a haircut, like in the kitchen, um, down here in San Diego. And uh, he'd be all over it, like, oh, what's wrong with this and that and this? And then eventually that kind of stopped because I got better. What brand mannequin are you using? This one's uh, from Hair Art. But uh, I also use pivot point mannequins. I, I don't uh, stick to just one. So everything has come down onto that elevation. So what we've got, guys, is a classic graduated bob. So then what we would do is we blow dry and, re and then come in and refine that afterwards. But I wanted to do this other side. It looks pretty good, that. It does. Oh, yeah, I work with that jawline really well. See, sometimes it's tricky to get to this length that you want. Look at the screen. So this is what I want to show you on this side. Come over here. Hi, Ira. What's up, geezer? So... When you start back here, like I just did on this side, it's very difficult to start here and go, okay, I'm gonna do this, this, and this, and this, and it's gonna end up exactly on the jawline. Because you're starting in the back and you're working where there's the most hair and you end up where there's the least hair. I mean, it's, it's proper Jedi stuff, that, right? And not everyone can nail it. I did pretty decent on that one. And I've not done the classic variation in a long time because I do it in a different way now. So I'm going to start it from the front instead of the back. And I'm going to put that length in immediately. So that if you're in a real situation, when we get back to not being isolated and we cut real people's hair, there's a psychology behind it, isn't there? So if you start back here, 
there's a period of time where she's freaking out because she doesn't know what length it's at. But if you place that length in there to begin with, it gets them all relaxed. And it's not just about them, it's about you too. Because there's nothing worse than freaking out while you're actually cutting hair. Because you know your client's freaking out. So just starting the haircut in a different place. So I'm literally going to do this haircut that I did on the other side backwards. But we're going to do square. Could you disconnect? Could you do disconnection with this shape? Of course you could. And then, <clears throat> since you're you an disconnect any hair cut. since you're an educator, do you ever get free mannequins? <laughs> no, I get a discount on them. But wouldn't it be great to get free mannequins? Pivot point. I know Gerard does. He gets free ones. When you transitioned to the side, what was, what, what, what was the guy? What you mean? This side or this side? Because when I went through on this side, guys, can you follow me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Look at what I'm doing. All I did was this. This side, completely different. I'm not doing the same haircut. I'm, I'm doing something similar. It's graduation. Someone said their mom's a hairdresser and they, like, they both work in a salon and so you and granddad both work at the same salon. Mm -hmm. So, so. Yeah, I know, my granddad still does hair. I'm, I'm not really a stylist in the salon. I teach pretty much full time. That's what I've always done. Hence all the knowledge. So, my section is level. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Get right in front of it so you can see the levelness of that. It's amazing. The Thank levelness you, is amazing. That's what they need to see. The levelness is amazing. See, don't get too comfortable with your camera skills because that's when it will start to suck. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, I'm going to put a, 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 a square, what we call square graduation, right? Now the thing is, I'm showing you this because I don't do it where I leave a corner. I want the, the weight to be level with the ground. So if I use over direction, it's gonna do that. And then if I come through the back and I over direct that way, it's gonna do that. So where that corner meets, it drops off. That is not level. Is it? So I'm going to cut something level. Yeah. Where can you get mannequins? Um, hair art or pivot point. You can get them on it. Amazon, I see. The previous side you did? Hmm? The previous side you did, question mark? Previous side we did a classic graduated bob. You guys, if you missed the previous side, you can always watch this when I repost it. And this live is up for 24 hours. So you can watch that. So I'm going to work with this length as a guide. So placing the length in first. Now I'm going to build the weight. So now I'm going to use elevation to do that. So now I'm going to graduate this. So if I wanted this to be triangular, I'd change the angle and I'd change the line to match the jawline. If I wanted it to be round, I would do the opposite. It would be this way. And I would cut a line that's shorter at the front, longer at the back. How's everyone doing? We good? We're good. We're good. All right, so now I'm going to take that first section and I'm going to elevate it above zero degrees. Couldn't tell you if this was 45 because again, I don't have a protractor. No one knows. All I know is that number two is now longer than number one and it's starting to make the hair bevel. 
into that jawline. <clears throat> and thank you, because somebody said I was an amazing camera girl. She is. So it's been really fun this past, uh, I think we've done like 20 things so far. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this past 10 days that we've been doing these things. Um, we're going to take a little break this weekend, but we will be back next week. Aaron said true Jedi stuff. Yeah, I mean, if you really want to get into haircutting, I mean, and go really deep into it instead of just cookie cutting haircuts, um, really mastering it, it does have that Jedi element to it. So every section, guys, is coming down into that first elevation that I used. they going to be the same on each no, side? No, they're not the same on each side. We're doing two different things. This is a graduated Bob, Bob Classic. Yeah, and now I'm doing square graduation on this side. What we're trying to do is maximize each mannequin and each class so that you learn one thing and then it's opposition, it's other thing, you know, so I don't just do one whole haircut and waste the time. See, if I was doing, this, doing the full haircut, I'd just do the same thing on the other side. So I'm just taking advantage of the mannequin, that's all. So again, I'm gonna continue and bring everything down into that. Try to stay clean down there. Somebody messaged me earlier and called me Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Um, um, I actually go by DJ. If you ever say Daniel, so, yeah, then it's if DJ. If you're a family member, then you can say Daniel. No one calls me Dan. It's too American, that, for me. So it's all coming down onto that first section. <laughs> Someone's outside singing. Mm hmm Um, we're gonna save this, right? Yeah. And then are you gonna are you gonna do a round graduation next week? Maybe. If you wanna see some mushroom haircuts, no no worries, we can do that. But what would I do right now guys to change this and make it round? Does anyone know? Very simple. One little adjustment to what I'm doing. All I would do is I would cut a line that's shorter towards the front. So start to make it move around. Drop the comb. Great. So again, I'm going to have a little cross check. Have a look at that build up. And we can see the roundness to it. Does your elevation change your horizontal lengths? Uh, ch it doesn't change this. It changes this. Elevation controls what you see vertically afterwards. It's controlling the vertical dimension of the haircut, which is also known as the height of the haircut. It's also known as the technique. And this technique is graduation. And we love you, Ira. <sighs> he said love you both. Yeah, he's a big love. He's really into love right now. Mm -hmm. You guys should check out Ira Pope Sage and his love stories.
So now let's do the back. So, generally, so Paul Mitchell cutting system would be to section this back into three and, and put your graduation in, over direct straight back, which we've been doing a lot of the classes I've showed you, and just join each panel in. Then it would be to come through and do this and bring everything down and then come through and the same thing through here and then vertical to take the nape in. And there's just a lot of bits to it, right? And it's great. It's a good way of fundamentally learning. Um, but what I realized with that is it's not really level. Because of the corner, it actually makes the these corner, the corner area drop and dip. So that to me is not really a square line. That's a curved line. I want more of a flat. So let me finish this. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to use this as a guideline that I've created in the front. I'm going to use that and I'm going to follow the head shape all the way around, no over direction. And that weight line will be parallel to the ground, which is what people call square, but there's not going to be four corners in this. So it's understanding what's going to happen. Again, that's all about experimentation, so. Um, would you change your sectioning if your finger and scissor angle to make it round? My yeah, like I said, I would change my finger angle when I first cut that line to make it round or triangular. And then would you stand in front? Would I stand in front? Only if I was working vertically, because it's all about over direction, isn't it? If I'm working horizontally, it's nothing about over direction, it's elevation, it's finger angle. So I would stand directly in front of it. Good question. So what I do is I take that guide. Now I'm stood directly in front of it. So I can see down the section from the root. I can see whether I'm bringing it forward or if it's pulling backwards. I want to keep it on base. And I'm going to use that as a guide. Does DJ have any plans to, cut, to come and teach in England? I do teach in England uh, when I'm over there. I do a lot of work with um, a company called Electric, Electric London, and they're based actually in Brighton, even though it's called Electric London. Um, and yeah. Yeah, you know, ele electric. electric. <laughs> it's gonna... Yeah, Ben was saying that the, the, the e-spray was his favorite spray. We use electric in our, our salon, so we're familiar with the products. This one smells good. A lot of people like that. So I'm continuing, guys. Keeping my sections upright, vertical. Come over this side. Mm -hmm. see Using a piece of the guide. The previous is a guide, excuse me. Get my grammar right. I'm moving around with it, so I'm stood directly in front of it. Now, if you do keep this body position, it's quite difficult to come in and cut this because you're stood and your feet are facing the head. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. So that to me is not a position of control. I'll start to do that. So what I do is I push my left foot forward, put my left foot forward now. And that gives me more real estate so I can swing around and I can actually see what I'm cutting. Don't worry, we are gonna, we're going to save it, the live, because someone said, hi, would you please save it? Got to put my daughter in bed. It's late in the UK. Yes, of course. We'll all, we, we save every one of them, so you can find them on my IG. Even if Instagram doesn't save them, we sit and we screen record. Yeah. Continuing all this in. Why isn't that round if you follow the head shape? The head shape isn't technically round, is it? It's roundish. To make something round, I would actually have to pull the hair forward so that it dropped off. That's what's round, guys, this. Come over here, me. That would be round. I want that. People call that square, but technically, it's not really square. It's just a line. It's just a line, it's level. 
So this is one of those moments where it's either blowing your mind, light bulbs are going off, or you're completely confused based on what you've been taught. And I was telling you that yesterday. A lot of people name things and they don't really look into it and make sure that it actually means what it says. It actually does that. Where do you get all the patience to answer the same questions over and over? I've been doing this a very long time. So hopefully I'll make 44 next month. Oh, <laughs> oh come on. Yeah. Um, but I started teaching when I was 20, 1920. Not in 1920, but 1920 years old. 1920? <laughs> I started teaching in 1920. <laughs> So I'm taking this all the way down. I'm not using any over direction. I'm just going to do a cross check in a minute because I want to make sure that it's not getting heavier towards the back. So again, guys, just one of those things, just showing you the mechanics of haircutting, not necessarily a specific haircut, but in this case, someone asked me to explore and do square graduation. And I wanted to show you that you don't actually have to create a square shape for the line to be level. And that is the weight line. So I'm just going to do a little rocky poo in here. Can you do a um, recap um, of what you did on the side panel? So on the side panel, you mean this? I pulled everything down to this elevation. So that created a graduation. And I'm now copying that graduation and taking it into the back. And I'm following the head shape. I'm not using any other direction. And my weight line, you can see, is level. It's not dropping. If I over direct forward, it gets longer. Pull away from what you want to keep. So I'm not pulling away from anything here other than the top of the head to keep the graduation. So it's my finger angle that's pulling away from what I want to keep. I'm a lefty, same position. So if you were a lefty, then it would be this hand holding the hair and the thumb pointing forward. So you'll be working this way. So the other side would be like what I'm doing now. Left is very easy. You're the mirror image of what I'm doing. So face me. So when you see me on in this, it's just like a mirror image. You can see that it would be what you would do. I always had uh, people complaining that people can't teach people left-handed if they're right-handed. They can. So but I do know a good left-hander. And he's out of England. His name's Ben Brown. So if you want some lefty to help you, he's your man. We're both righties. Me and my dad. Uh, yeah, I am. And I, um, I won't lie. Early on, I had a go at uh, trying to do the left hand up as well. <laughs> Very Sassoon thing to do that. In fact, there was one guy in Sassoon world that was ambidextrous. He could cut the shapes with either hand. See, His name was Roger Thompson. I'm just, I, I can't use my left hand. Like, it's literally useless. Like, it doesn't do anything. Well, you're 12 too, so you don't uh, really do um, much of one, have you? I, um, I t well, technically, I'm on my 13th year of life, well, outside of the womb, so. <laughs> yes, that's true. So, guys, as I've reached the natural round of the head, to keep my sections vertical up and down, I have to pivot off the crown. So that's what's happening. That's how he's so old and patient, been teaching since 1920. Funny, I know. <laughs> And then your body position is just... My body position is this left foot is in front of what my right foot is. My right foot points at my guide, at the section. So this foot's forward so that I can actually swing the top half of my body around and see what I'm doing. But I'll still be pulling the hair to this hip. The hips don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> full of dad jokes. Shake your, yeah. shake your. So again, this is just 
experimentation is me finding out how this worked. And so if I just don't use any other direction, the line stays consistent. So if someone asked for Dorothy Hamill's wedge, this would be it? No. No, that's going to be a firefly. That's round. So it would be even shorter in the front, dropping towards the back. It would come to that point. Remember the duck's ass haircut? So in America, a lot of people call it the wedge. Um, in Sassoon world, in the UK, it's known as the firefly. And um, Christopher Brooker's technique back in the early 70s. Um, but the best firefly I've ever seen done was by Henry Abel, who's in Beverly Hills. So come and look at my weight line. So it's staying level. It's not getting shorter or longer. Um, and he said that he did try to cut with his left hand Me? in the beginning. Yes, he did. Yeah, yeah, very Sassoon thing to do when you're nerding out and you're learning. It's like Jedi training, but how Sassoon. So I was like, oh, I'm going to try and do it left-handed as well. I think it lasted a couple of weeks and I realised just stick to one or else you're never going to make it. Stop dancing. So I'm following the head shape, guys. I'm moving around. No over direction. I should learn how to do the splits. Yeah. Great idea. <laughs> well, because I'm not flexible. Like, I want to be able to, like, Let's my Let's learn how to do the math homework. And mm-hmm. all that. Like, I, that's how... I'm not how to do it. So taking this all the way in. Again, no other direction. Else it's gonna get longer towards the center back. Recap. So if you have just got here, we're almost finished. And I'll recap in a couple of seconds when I've done these few sec- few sections. And I'll tell you exactly what we did on both sides. Thank you. Someone said I'm lovely. I said thank you very much. Same principles apply guys, don't go past the second knuckle. If I was working the other side, I would go past the second knuckle because I do want it to be longer towards the top. So if I was working this way, I have no problem going past that second knuckle because that's what graduation does. But on this side, I gotta be careful because if I'm not, I will layer the edge. Um. <clears throat> And then, I, yes, I w- I, it would be fun to be a hairstylist. That would be fun. You know, it's, that's funny because I grew up in this industry and I always was like, oh, I'll just be a hairdresser. And my dad was like, no, you don't just be a hairdresser. It takes a lot of work and discipline. and um, you, have to, you have to be tough, especially when he learned to do it, but also when I did it. It was in the early to mid 90s when you still got yelled at and you couldn't go into HR for, for that reason. You had to learn it um. and learn to be respectful. It's like boot camp in a, in a way. Ben Brown, because somebody said, can you name the lefty? Oh, someone's screaming outside. The lefty, Ben Brown, he's out of the UK. He answered the question for them. Did he? <laughs> He said bet. Gerard said now, um, D- okay, she said, he, ah, he said, DJ, your Rona, Corona, I'm guessing that's Corona, soundtrack, I can't stop listening to the Smiths. Now Depeche Mode. Oh, my soundtrack right now? What am I listening to? Um, well, I'm always listening to Depeche and uh, New Order, um, 
I like the Smiths, not a huge, huge fan. Um, I tend to live on the happier parts of life than listening to Morrissey and Marnie. Um But I do love their music. The Smiths were, were a really important band. Gerard says, my high school music is very comforting right now. <laughs> very. But I always listen to my high school music. And then, is it level slash square because your sections are vertical? You got it, and I didn't use any over direction. So, what people would generally call square and try and create corners, I've not done that, and I've kept my weight line level and parallel to the ground. Um, if you do try and put corners in it, those corners droop. So why put the corners in there? Gerard says nice trousers. Thank you, sir. I was gonna wear my shorts like you, but. My legs are a little too pale. <laughs> <laughs> Any chance you can come teach in Greece? Oh, I'd love to come teach in Greece. Can I come with you? You'd have to, because who's going to translate and hold my uh, video? Because I, I want always wanted to go to Greece. It, looks, like it's, it would be so pretty. I've been to Greece when I was young. Oh, well, that's great for you. <laughs> you know, Europeans, they... So, Guys, let's just break that down. Someone wanted to recap. So on this left side, I did the classic Vidal Sassoon graduated Bob. Not sectioning off the underneath and doing that first vertically and then putting this down on top of it. The actual fluid movement of working from vertical diagonal to horizontal diagonal by climbing with each pivot until I got my desired geometry through to follow the jawline. And then I pulled everything down onto that, so I created the bob. So you build the foundation and you put the, the, the house on top of it. So that's a classic G-bob right there. Ever do any dry cuts? Um, not really a dry cutter, no. I'm much more of a wet haircut guy, and I refine when it's dry. Um, the only time I ever did dry cut hair cutting was when I used to cut hair on stage at, uh, at trade shows because you don't have that much time to do wet to dry. Um, so I would cut everything dry. It's never easy. So let's talk about this side. So we wanted to explore square. Someone was been asking me, do square, do square, right? And um, generally, if you do square, you use over direction, da da da, and it leaves this corner right here. And that corner is gonna droop. So it's not really flat, it's curved, right? So I came through this front side panel and I used horizontal sections parallel to the line that I was going to cut. And I use a low elevation, so above zero, but I don't know exactly where because no one really knows where 45 is. Um, basically below the hairline. And I pulled everything down onto that so it gave me this nice graduation. Is this square slash level because your sections are vertical? Do sections yeah. determine shape? Sections and over direction can, uh, can determine shape, so there's not just one aspect to it. So then what I did is I used the length and graduation that I, I picked up here from doing the front panel, and I just used vertical sections and I pulled straight out from the head, and my weight line is level. It's not dropping towards the front, it's not dropping towards the back. So what people call square, it doesn't actually have to be a square. You really <laughs> drop the bone on you. <laughs> Oopsies. So, quite a technical class today, guys, on understanding graduation. Layers is so much more easy, I feel. Whereas this is, if you want to be a good hair cutter, these are the shapes that you really want to concentrate on and, and really master because building weight is the hardest thing to do because there's no room for error. It's pure construction. What up? <laughs> I read Gerard and um, Ben are um they're all well they're all going off after Ben for being a lefty. Uh -huh. <laughs> awesome. So I'm gonna stop the class now. We've pretty much done this. I'll probably blow dry them and refine them, and we'll show you that another time.